Today we're going to talk about making color choices when we paint. If we're using a photograph, uh, we don't want to depend upon the photograph totally, especially when it comes to color. Uh, the subtleties in photographs are not there at all that we see when we're outside painting or drawing. So we want to be able to come up with uh, color variations that work better and not rely on the photograph entirely for all our color. Now today we're going to be looking at using color schemes when painting a landscape. And the main reason for doing that is to get away from the photographic color when you're working in the studio. I don't think I've ever used a color scheme when I'm outside because I want to practice painting what I see to some degree. So if I have references that are, you know, in the summer everything's very green, I'll sometimes pick a color scheme to change the colors up. Not necessarily just change the season, but I could still have summer and just have more, more color in it. The other thing is it really forces us to think in terms of value because we're not using the color in the photograph, which is never very good color. And we're forcing everything into three colors or the mixture of those three colors. And we learn more about uh, color that way. We maybe use colors that we had never used before. So we come up with mixtures that we never used before, like, like a red orange sky or blue violet grass. You know, you got, skies aren't blue and grass isn't always green. So it helps us to think outside the box and we become more familiar with the colors on our palette that way. Kind of like doing color charts as well, only they're a lot more practical than color charts. Color charts don't have any context to them. But if I pick a color scheme on a landscape, then obviously I'm applying it to the landscape or the figure or still life, whatever I'm, I'm doing. So we're going to use triadic colors. And the main triadic scheme is the primary colors red, yellow, blue. And a triadic color scheme is pick one color every three colors, or you're picking three colors and you're skipping three before you go to the next one. So equally spaced colors on the color chart. And this one's a very safe color scheme. You can mix everything with that and everything doesn't look pushed into a scheme because you can mix everything with primary colors. But the minute I get away from primary colors, so if I go red, orange, yellow, green, blue, violet. So uh, red, orange, yellow, green, and blue, violet. Again, I don't like this color wheel. It doesn't look like blue, violet to me, but anyway, again, you can do it from anywhere. The, this would be violet, yellow, orange, green. So that would be another one. So you can, again, just move around and you can pick any three. You can gear it towards whatever colors you want to push in your painting. What you don't want to do is use the photograph as a idea of what colors to pick. I usually go for the exact opposite. So if I have an all green photograph, I will use more of the yellow, try and stay away from green in other words, and pick a triad of color scheme that works, works differently than the photograph. So we're gonna look at the first photograph here, and this is uh, in the Bighorn Mountains near Sheridan, Wyoming. And it's summer, but there's not bad color in here. We've got the yellow, orange, green, in other words, blue and yellow with some orange in it for the grass, a lot of orange, uh, very muted yellow, orange, green for the trees, darker, blue, green back in here, violets back in here. So that's not a bad color scheme, but I can still change it up. Add a little snow for contrast, um, push the grass down here a grayish blue, green, and a gray, blue, green with patches of red in it more winter grass, and then the red, violet, blue, violet mountains. Uh, some of these I didn't use a color scheme, I just went for color changes. Here the same thing, yellow, red, orange, and some bluish green in here, just again, get away from summer colors. You know, a lot of this is very dry here, so there is a lot of color in the grass, a lot of reds, oranges, which helps out a lot. And these are aspens in the summer, so making them more yellow. But the important thing is the value. I can make this any color as long as I have the right value. And that's what we want to think through is creating the right value. It fits. I mean, trees are still green. Grass, I didn't touch the blue or the sky. And the sky or the grass has some green in it, but mostly the red, orange, and some kind of violet in there. So use different colors. Kind of get out of your comfort zone a little bit. Pop more contrast, more strong dark and light contrast, especially with this much sunlight. Camera did not pick up much 
much variation. This is also in Bighorn Mountains. And again, kind of blah color-wise. So I'm going to push more colors here. I used a blue-violet, red-orange, yellow-green triadic color scheme. So a lot of blue-violet in the shadows, a lot of red-orange, yellow-green in the trees. The big thing is the value, how much darker the flat or slanted plane is from the upright. In other words, I can't get them the same. These uprights are darker than the flat. So I can have both. I can have the flat areas lighter and darker than the trees, but I just can't have them the same. Simplified the blue-violet in the shadows. I created a bit more shadows. The sun was pretty much overhead. This was midday. So I pushed the light a little bit over to the right, uh, left and the shadows on the right. Could have a cast shadow from here if I'm going to push the light over there. And all these, again, don't forget to adjust I don't care for this tree on the left. It just kind of sits there drawing attention away from the focal point. So I would crop it, zoom in a bit to my focal point, which I think is these aspens here, and cut down the shrubbery here a little bit so that viewer's eye can kind of move in that direction. The last one here is in uh, Missouri. And I took this with the iPhone. Not a very good picture. The Greens, way too green, way too much of an acid type green, very harsh. Uh, so I'm using a yellow, orange, red, violet, blue, green. So the yellow, orange, and the blue, violet can give me a green. It's just not as green as what I mix with blue and yellow. I want to use all three of those colors, with a complete value range with each color, and then subtle mixtures of one or two or three colors and that gives you an infinite number of colors to mix. So it's never the idea that, well, I only have three colors, there's hardly anything to mix. Uh, there's plenty, you can mix all day long with three colors in white, because the white also changes the color as well. And just subtle variations of one color or another can give you a different feel. I did lift up the tree here on the left. It's um, a little too flat in the original photograph. The trees are just breaking them up I'd probably make this tree a little bit bigger so there's less space between trees so they aren't equal in distance. But just trying to break up the color using the yellow, orange, red, violet coming up with these mixtures that I don't ordinarily come up with. So it helps to, uh, to have that. And I usually try and stay with those three colors because that's the point of the exercise. And it does force you to learn a lot more about about color. So trying that and getting you quite a few varieties of possibilities with the uh, triadic color scheme. I would recommend not trying the red, yellow, blue. It's certainly triadic, but it's very, very safe. Primary colors, you have all three primaries so you can mix everything. Without the primary colors, you're restricted some and that forces you to think a little bit differently.